Hi, my name is Jordan Tribble with Pneumatic Arts here at 13 Moons Ranch in Carbondale, Colorado, our summer training grounds. Thank you for joining us here on our YouTube channel for our very first Flying Trapeze short film. This is what's up! This is what's up! This is how it's done. Good. <laughs> that was a good idea. The altitude's brutal, man. We need to take lunch break. Yeah. <laughs> Beer break! <laughs> How's this hill? <laughs> the hill is real. When Jordan first started doing flying trapeze in Santa Monica, I would say that is the first time that he even started conceptualizing the ideas of where he wants to put a flying trapeze rig. Ever since I started flying trapeze, I've always like wanted to do something different and wanted to make it my own and kind of and I keep saying this, but like to change the market. I've always wanted to do my own thing with it and, and kind of take it to a new level. And when I met Nick, I naturally just started talking to him about it and we started getting hyped and started really talking about it and discussing how we were gonna do it and what kind of projects we were gonna do and what was the first thing. And it always came up to this, um, this forest project, always doing something in the forest. A lot of people have a lot of different ideas and we all have ideas and most of them never really come to fruition and you know this idea just started with with an idea a dream you know to put a flying trapeze rig into the forest I don't think we really thought about the logistics of all the different things that would go into putting a trapeze rig and filming a short story or for a short film from it it went from that dream to asking people if they would block out some time on their schedule in the summer to come to Colorado and then once we had a handful of people that were committed to it, we said, all right, well, let's make it, you know? So. Um, you know, and everyone's volunteering. There was just a lot of process on how we were going to make everyone feel really happy and really good about being out here and really wanting to be a part of it. So, um, you know, food was a huge, huge aspect of that and Nick took care of that and he really made sure that the food was there for everyone and everyone had something to eat. And I mean, just all of the, all of the logistics of like having a, week-long party you know <laughs> which is kind of what we've been doing in the forest only a lot more work with it i just keep telling like wanting to pinch myself like this can't be real like honestly i think it's a once in a lifetime thing like no one's ever done this before to to modify the rig so that it works on a slope and a mountain and the trees i mean who's crazy enough to do that <laughs> you know i feel really lucky that you know we have had such great um, division of labor, I guess. You know, Jordan has been incredible uh, with the rigging. You know, he came out here, he was able to measure everything and find, you know, and build these, these certain uprights so that the rig would fit. Amelia is super type A personality. I mean that in a great way. Like she was able to take all of our creative and crazy ideas and put them onto a piece of paper and have them make sense so that other people could read them. You know, and then from my end, I, I felt like I was working on a lot of the behind the scenes stuff as far as getting the right insurance and dealing with um, permits and making sure that people were going to be fed and making sure that the campsite was good and kind of all those little, you know, small tasks. So I feel very grateful. I feel like without everybody working together, this project just, it wouldn't have happened. I was so impressed by the measurements that the guys took before we got here, by the preparation that they took, making the extra pole extensions um, in order to make everything straight and make the nut bounce nicely. And all of the rigging went so smoothly. And having done setups and teardowns in a lot of buildings and in a lot of different settings, um, I didn't expect the side of a mountain where we have a 15 foot drop from our highest point to our lowest point on the ground uh, for it to go so well and be put up so quickly um, and to feel so safe up there. This project was freeing in the sense that I didn't have to go up there and look pretty, you know, that wasn't the goal. The goal was um, larger than that. So putting the trapeze out here in the woods in this beautiful location um, has been a, a real ordeal, but when you walk through this amazing natural environment um, and come across something as strange and foreign as a trapeze, uh, 
you would think that it wouldn't fit, but it, it seems like it's almost part of the forest or like it belongs here. The color of the aspens is so similar to the color of the aluminum. And the whole idea that we had for this project was that this trapeze was uh, an organism of the forest. Um, what we came down to is really for all of us doing this thing and coming together and, and creating this project is kind of the story in itself in a different way. It's all for these characters coming together from all aspects of life that are being called to the trapeze to come do this really awesome thing. And, and as we do that, we become this organism that moves and flows and grows together. And the aspens just fit that perfectly. We was, came here to sunlight and it was perfect, you know. There was such a diversity of forest and nature scenes for us to shoot our shots. Logistically, there was to have a shack where we could put all our production gear, make our meals, a place for people to use the bathroom, you know, a centralized camping site. Like, I honestly don't know where this project would have gone if, if we didn't have those amenities that Sunlight offered. When we started this project, we thought we would be totally self-sufficient, dry ice coolers. I was so nervous. I spent a lot of time in the backcountry, and I just really didn't know like if we were going to pull this off with coolers and bears. I just was really worried. Um, and then sunlight came out of the heavens and told us that we could use their shack, which has a fridge in it, which was really exciting. Um, and I went in there the first day. You know, it was looking a little bad, but I did something called flitting. So I went in there and I got some Christmas lights up and I reorganized the shelves and I really made the shack like the, the, the production headquarters of food. And I think I love the shack now. Like me and the shack, we're quite close. It's good. You know, my dad just said, oh, well, you should, you should talk to Sunlight, you know, talk to Troy <laughs> and Tom. And I was like, oh, OK, great. So we went and we had a meeting with them and they were just above and beyond helpful. You know, and it's kind of funny because, you know, we're talking about this call that we've all had to trapeze and it's kind of, it is, it's the same thing with them. Like for some reason, they also feel that call to like allow us to be able to do this. I, I work in production a lot, but I've never worked on a production that you're also camping. So that was, as, as a city girl, that was definitely slightly challenging for me, but I think, I think I adjusted, I adjusted quite well. Um, I would say one of the main, one of the main challenges uh, work-wise was not having the usual resources that I'm used to having on a job and having to think on the fly. And, you know, if I don't have a Q-tip, do something with a stick instead, you know? Um, and lighting was also a challenge because we're using all natural light. And so that was definitely something that we were navigating. Um, all in all though, I mean, I think that, I think that everyone sort of band together and we used, we were all resourceful and reliable and used what we had to make the best thing possible. Well, it was just funny because when they first asked me to come, they said, will you help with social media? I said, sure. And they said, um, would you be willing to like be a runner? We just need somebody to run cards back and forth. I was like, sure, no problem. They're like, um, we also need you to be a PA. I'm like, okay. And then, and then it came to, uh, how about script supervisor? I said, sure. And then um, finally assistant director. And I said, look, just so you know, I have no experience in any of this stuff, so you can call me whatever you want. Just tell me what to do and I'll try to do my best. I, I can't believe they did it. These guys are amazing and I'm biased because I'm in love with one of them, but um, I really, God, they can do anything. They just, they have such vision. Nick is such a great catcher and such a great guy and cares about all of his flyers and it's those qualities that make for such a great catcher. Peeps flies mo just the most beautifully as anyone could. Her lines are so perfect, her form so perfect, and she has the prettiest smile and it never leaves her face. Every time I see her up there, it makes me happy. Miley, my God, she is the toughest little cookie in the world. She's got just all sorts of go for it and is such an amazing flyer. Her two and a half is beautiful and just 
balls for days. Jordan Tribble is, is one of the most special flyers of our time. Um, he's, he's really a special flyer and he hates it when I say that, but it's the truth. When I see him fly, when I see him swing, when I see him break, even now that I'm used to it, I'm not used to it. It just puts me in awe. Ah, this can be a lot of stuff, you know. This open a door for a lot of creative ideas we can do. We put a trapeze in the mountain. What's next? When Jordan first came and, and brought the idea of me creating the music for him, and I originally totally just started making whatever I kind of thought that I could. And eventually I scoped it down into what it is now. Um, make something original that translates across all scenes and all the things that they're trying to get across to the audience. And I think that part of it is just the fact that I know Jordan so well. There's an understanding of what it's like to run through a forest. There's an understanding of what it's like to do the flying trapeze, to compete, to um, excel, to strive, and what kind of music and what kind of feeling do you want to feel when you're, when you're in those places. I think this project just is so unique and for the future of trapeze, it's taking it to a completely different medium. This project is such a special thing because the few future of trapeze, it needs to evolve. We, we need to, to move into a situation where we reach more people. I really want this project to reach out to um, most people who have a passion for something and really want to, to take that next step but don't have that, um, that inspiration. And I'm hoping that this video and everything that we're doing can be an inspiration. Um, to others to, to follow their dreams and follow those passions. If you look around here, you're never gonna find a rig like this anywhere else in the world, you know? There's something about being in this space that pays more than any job ever will, you know? The, you can't put a dollar price to what's happened here. We filmed connected routes amongst the aspen trees at Sunlight Mountain Resort. The aspen trees are one of the largest living organisms connected by its massive root system. We decided to film amongst the aspen trees because as it looks like one tree, the tree is actually connected to all its surrounding trees. This was great symbolism for our short film. We believe this short film is the beginning of a new era in flying trapeze. It took a lot of volunteered manpower to make this film possible. So thank you all for joining us in the very first Pneumatic Arts short film, Connected Roots. Radio Time 650. Coming up on Colorado's Morning News, have you gotten your flu shot yet? CDC data says you probably haven't, and you should. We'll get into that in a live interview right after traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the tens. John Morsey's out there with you. He's at the
Thank you all so much for watching and supporting us. A real special thanks to Sunlight Mountain Resort and 13 Moons Ranch. If you'd like to see what else we have in store, please follow us on our Instagram at Pneumatic Arts or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Pneumatic Arts. Definitely like when I would walk up the hill with a box of food and everyone treated me like I was a celebrity. That was really great. I felt very appreciated in those moments. When there was like a clearing in the trees, we were watching the stars and there were shooting stars. Then we like hiked down to the rig. We all got in the net and we were like bouncing in the net, like just like kids. The view and you know, you're forcing out on the bar and you're just looking up and you see leaves in the sky and it's just unreal. Like it's been, I will never forget how it feels to fly on this rig. So many moments that were my favorite moments ever. We slapped a bull, uh, we tipped trees, we went caber tossing. They gave me a walkie talkie and now no one is responding to me. And I like whenever I get to say action. There was like a lot of times where I, you know, that's just a cool thing to say. Say hi to the camera. Everybody say hi. Hi. Uh, hey. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> I have never seen anything like this. This is the most amazing rig on the planet. I am so lucky that I got to fly on it. <laughs>